Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Hugh Capital Podcast with yours truly, Jerlisa Juju Fontaine. Uh, per usual, you know that I'm always really excited and intrigued to introduce you all to people who inspire me on a daily basis. And after I have this person introduce themselves, I'm actually going to tell you all as to my first introduction with this person and why they matter to me. But this particular episode is really for those who are either aspiring entrepreneurs and founders or people who have already found their company and they're looking to actually grow that company. And I believe that this person who is here with us today, Mr. Darian Watson, has a lot of information to share with you all. So as a reminder, this particular episode will be breaking up into two different episodes where this first episode will be focusing on his upbringing, his culture, his education, what he maybe thought he wanted to do before he actually started working towards his companies and being an entrepreneur. And then after that, for those who want to listen to the second episode, which you all should, we're going to get really fixated into what it actually looks like to be a founder who's intentionally building their company even full time. So don't miss the second episode. Don't be lazy. Take your time. Listen to both. And we're going to have a fun time. All right, everybody. Great. Now. I can tell you all so much about Darian, but I actually want Darian to introduce himself and let you all know what he's about. So <clears throat> Darian, let everybody know, who is Darian Watson? Hey everybody, my name is Darian Watson, born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. I am the CEO and co-founder of squadtrip.com. Squad Trip enables group travel organizers to plan, organize, collect money for group trips all in one place. And I love that you just broke it down that way. And for anybody who's listening right now, and I know that there's a large amount of you who are probably frequent travelers, just know that if you are interested in finding travel groups to get acquainted with because you feel like solo trips aren't for you, or maybe your girlfriends or your guy friends don't want to hang out with you that much anymore because they're in new relationships or getting married, well, guess what? On his platform, there are groups actually hosting what he just mentioned for people like yourself. Okay? so. Make sure that you all look at the description below and stay tuned for all the information that he has on his website. And if you are somebody who is hosting your own travel groups, you know exactly what site to come to, what platform to come to in order to host those things. All right, you guys, don't forget that. But once again, we're going to start off with who Darian is. And for most of you who are frequent listeners of this podcast, you know that culture is very important <coughs> to me. So once again, I'm West Indian. My family's from the island of Dominica, first generation American. But to be honest, it wasn't until maybe I was in high school that I kind of realized that growing up West Indian American is a little different than growing up as somebody whose ancestry has really been based in like the United States. So Derry, and I have a question for you. Give us some insight into like, you know, your cultural background and how that basically sculpted who you are. Sure, sure. Um, uh, growing up uh, in a single parent household in Brooklyn, New York, I spent a lot of time with my mother and my grandparents. Uh, that side of the family is from a little island off the coast of Honduras called Ratan. And I grew up in an immigrant household. And I also grew up in Canarsie, Brooklyn. And there's a lot of immigrants in my neighborhood as well. And I think one thing we'll all agree on is that living in Brooklyn, especially among immigrants, we've all got that hustle in us. Um, and ultimately, all of us have that entrepreneurial spirit in us as well. And I do have to chime in there really quickly. I do want to um, reiterate the fact about uh, this hustle that we have in us. I actually feel like that comes a lot from like curiosity. I feel like even though we're born here and we go to school here and everything like that, the nature of our household teaches us so much about who we're supposed to be in comparison to what we're experiencing at school that I think that by nature, we're just curious to know, like, what does the States have to offer? Like our parents are telling us their perception of what the States has to offer us, but we're constantly curious about, well, what else is out there for me? Not just in terms of my local environment, but even beyond that, because maybe I'm watching TV shows and maybe a particular show is based in, 
freaking Arkansas and Kansas and Missouri. And I don't have family out there. I don't have any connection to those environments. So now I become more curious about that. And that could just be in terms of like cultural awareness or even for someone who's an entrepreneur being inspired by where certain shows are based or whatever the case may be. It can also inspire you to think about, well, what does business opportunities look like outside of like where I live and where I'm from? Hmm, maybe I should travel there. Uh, so I do love Darian that you highlighted once again that you felt like coming from this background really kind of contributed to that hustle nature that you have. Yeah, I think we always we're looking for problems to solve in order to make money. Um, and now when I think about my, I guess my grandparents and then my my parents, like so my grandfather came here and he was a merchant marine. Um, my the generation after him. My all my aunts really worked, you know, really good, stable city jobs, right? And I think they wanted me to become a doctor, or a lawyer, an accountant, or in finance. It made sense, and I think for that generation, maybe a little bit before me. But when you're given these opportunities, at the same time, I think we, to your point, we look at the world a little bit differently to see what can we get out of the world and what can I want to do something that that fulfills me and makes me a lot of money, but I'm happy doing it. We're, we're passing beyond a secure job. And so they, I think, did all the work before me, especially my mom. She got, my mom got her master's and it's like, I will never get my master's unless unless um, I get a honorary degree. I'm working on that. But um, she had to get her master's to secure great job prospects. But I think that there's so many more opportunities for us. We're born, we were born into the age of the internet. And so I have the hustle and bustle. I, I have the groundwork and know that, hey, I could work, I could you know, do the college thing. I could work in one of these professions, but having the, I guess the comfort and almost, I don't wanna say the nest egg to know that, hey, I can try things. And I know my grandparents and uh, my parents always like encourage me to try different things and do what we love. And I'm fortunate to now be you know, working on squadtrip.com full time and doing what I love as well. I love that. And this is why I tell you all, once again, I only uh, invite people to speak who I'm inspired by, because how could you not have been inspired by that response? <laughs> so I had to throw that in there. Um, but I do want to highlight something that you just mentioned in regards to, I don't want to say a force li limitation, but maybe like an implicitly forced limitation that sometimes uh, Caribbean parents who are migrating here typically put on their children because that's all they know about. So they'll say things like, hey, listen, my child, I want you to be a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher, a mechanical engineer, or whatever the case may be. And for us, at the time when you're first hearing that and haven't done your own research, you feel like, okay, let me choose the best out of those options. So my question for you, Darian, is when you were a little Darian, not adult Darian, like what did you think you wanted to do and how has that changed over time? That was always influenced by who I was around. Mm. So a friend of mine, his dad was an architect. A friend of my mom's was an engineer. Uh, I have a family friend who was an accountant and I looked up to them. And so that's what I decided I, I, I wanted to study. Then I cross-referenced that with what I was good at. And by the time I was in, like getting ready to go to college, I was just looking up like, okay, how much do lawyers make? How much, like literally, um, and don't, don't get me wrong. Like I went to college, uh, a, four, um, a four year college and I got a, a bachelor's. And I think that afforded me the baseline of having the good job that pays that I can take that money and every night uh, work on something else that I was interested in. And so, I don't want anybody to get it twisted. I think if you have a plan for sure, you know, you don't have to go to school. I didn't have a plan. I was kind of just going by what I was introduced to based on who was successful around me. Mm. And uh, there weren't that many people in technology or many entrepreneurs. And so I went with what I knew and that did give me a base that I was able to start from that allowed me to pour my time and my money into something else that would eventually bear fruit. I love that. 
And I, I want to think more to your college experience, right? I know you had mentioned that throughout your life, once again, who you wanted to be or who you aspired to be was very dependent on maybe who impressed you at that time. Maybe at a particular moment, to your point, it was the accountant. Maybe at another time, it was the architect. But for Darian, who came into college at 18 years old, what did that Darian think he wanted to do? Was it back to that lawyer example you gave or was it something else or you just really did not know? I I always knew I wanted to carve out some space for myself. Okay. I love solving problems. So like give me give me a problem to solve and I'll, you know, put my head together and figure it out. Like I remember uh and again it goes back to like the influence of living in brooklyn like i would step out on flatbush ave utica ave and see the dollar bands people are creating solutions like oh we have a transit problem okay well we're gonna make money doing it. when it was snow me and my friends would get together and shovel out like the whole block and make money off of that so i knew that like that's the stuff i like to do like taking computers apart and hopefully a couple times i was not able to put it back together I, it is what it is um but the trial and error, like knowing that like, hey, it's on me to, to succeed or fail. I love that pressure, so to speak. So when I went to college, again, I spoke to some of the friends I knew. It was going, I was either going to be a lawyer um, uh, that worked at one of these corporate firms or be an investment banker or go into finance. Again, I just wanted to get a job where I could make a couple hundred thousand. And I was like, hey, I make 300,000 a year for a couple of years. I might have a barbershop and nail salon. Like I was, I always wanted to just make the money so I could do something else. So while I was in college, I was playing um, poker mm. and making money in online tournaments. I was, I had all these other jobs. Like the whole goal was to just make money so that I could funnel that. I used to throw parties. Um, so any any place where I could make money, I wanted to do that. And I just, I figured going to college. I could at least bag myself a six figure job and then use that money to then get into something else. Even, even if it's like real estate, Oh, these are all the things that are on my mind. I didn't take a real estate course until after college, but that was something that was interesting to me as well. The job was just like a means to an end and the end was never going to be, I retire someplace. I love that response. And two things I actually want to highlight there. First things first, the name of the movie is not coming to mind, but there was a movie with Justin Timberlake. And I think apparently he may have been like an investor at a firm somewhere. Then he went back to school for his master's. And ultimately he was like a great poker player or whatever the game was and kind of got caught up in at that time. I think that was maybe the early 2000s. I could be saying this wrong, um, but they had like a lot of like poker tournaments going on like internationally. Does that movie sound familiar to you? No. It probably doesn't. It's okay if it doesn't. But for anybody listening, help me out here. Help me remember what the name of that movie was. I'll probably Google it afterwards. But if anybody is intrigued by the fact that Darian was playing poker, check out that movie. You'll probably find it very interesting. I looked it up. It's Runner Runner. But is that is that what, what it was? It might be. Is Justin Timberlake in it? Yes. Then, Yeah. Is that poker? Was that the game that they were playing? Yep, yep. Okay, awesome. There's a, there's a better one called Rounders. Rounders. Um, that, that's, it's a classic for sure. I'm going to look into that. Was that in 1998? I can't, it was in the, in the 2000s. I can't remember. Maybe okay. the 90s. Well, to anybody interested in learning poker or wanting to be inspired to get into it, take a look at those movies that we just mentioned. But let me get back to the focus, y'all, because you know I get excited. Now, what I want to talk about very soon is as somebody who came in with this plan to use your degree or leverage your degree to get this hundreds of thousand dollar paying job, I do want to get insight into what actually happened after you graduated. But before we get there, one thing that's very important to me is the experience that people had at their university if they indeed went. And I want to get an understanding of what were you involved with in your undergrad that maybe even also contributed to your growth as a growing adult male and like how it probably sculpted like what you wanted to do post-college? What was I involved with in college that had an influence on what I'm doing now? Exactly. I think at the time I didn't 
know it, but I was making connections. Uh, I joined a fraternity, you might've heard of it, Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Uh, that gave me the opportunity to meet brothers in my, in that, my, my current chapter who were older, who were a couple steps ahead, who were doing the things that I was interested in. Uh, so one of my, my pro fights, uh, he had graduated, he was a couple years older than me, but he was happy to like, you know, meet me at the bar and talk about what he was doing in finance. And that was one of the guys who I was like, I got to get into finance. Um, I actually, you know, again, pledging Kappa, I traveled, um, you know, I can't even say that I traveled, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll keep it this. <laughs> uh huh. They can hear you. You traveled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we traveled. You know, before I was a noob, and then after I became one, I did a lot of traveling. So I met a lot of noobs across the country and made connections. Um, and I think even at, at some point, I did a semester at because I went to Trinity College. I did a semester at Old Westbury, SUNY College at Old Westbury. Um, and at the time I already knew my frat bros who went there because I had met them in the past. Maybe I wouldn't have gone there, but I, I was I was doing an internship in the city. So I just I wanted to do an internship for the semester and also still be taking courses. So it just made sense. I had my finance internship in in um, downtown Manhattan and I would take the L I double R um out to oh, what, uh, SUNY O Westbury and there I met a lot of people and I did not realize at the time, um, I was go I went back into Connecticut and I was throwing parties. And so fast forward, when I graduated, I wanted to build an event ticketing platform uh, to connect an event discovery platform to connect black people um, to events that you might be interested in, whether you're in New York, DC, LA, Philly, whatever. Part that's the same reason why I saw after a black fraternity at a historically white college. I, I was seeking that experience and I couldn't articulate it at the time, but that's what I wanted. So when I graduated, I wanted to keep that going as well. I think what helped me get that off the ground was my connections that I met um, in college, throwing events, but also just uh, fostering relationships with bros that I met all over the place. And so, a lot of the people who used my platform events on whim in the early days they were people i met uh on the island a lot of those members of frat bros or members of other fraternities and i i definitely have to like uh i guess attribute my knowing them through my college experiences i love that and that's the reason why i always think that question is so important everyone once again like i know that sometimes Maybe you're someone who's an introvert and you feel like going to either a medium sized college or a large college or listen, maybe even a small one. Sometimes you just really don't want to engage with people. And I think it's very important that whether the type of organization that you join is a professional community or a social community or both, just join something and get involved in something because you ultimately never know who you're going to meet how they inspire you to try new things like throwing parties or whatever the case may be, and ultimately how that can inspire or impact your future career or business goals. So I always yeah. want to remind you all for who, for those who are actually in college right now, try your best to get involved, build your network, build it authentically, and you never know how that's going to help you in the long run. And I did mention to you all that I wanted to remind you what my first introduction to Darian was and he mentioned about his platform events by whim i actually used to use whim i thought it was in my opinion i thought it was really helpful because once again like you're able to see like that black community presence like you're able to see people who are having events there whether it's professional events whether it's social events you're seeing a multitude of types of events the thing that i never understood was i think i've used his your platform for maybe three events or so and I was like, you know what? I wonder why I never even like tried to look up who owns this. Like, why did they care so much to build this? And then I ultimately figured out who it was, which was you. And I was like, you know what? I'm having an event about people who are trying to like branch into technology. I want this person who I'm intrigued by to be on my event and speak about their journey. So that was my first introduction to Darian is 
understanding that he is the person who is the owner of a platform that I use for my prior business and ultimately getting to get some insight into his story during one of my events. So that was very helpful. And I wanted to highlight that. Now, as we get towards the end of this interview, I did mention before that I wanted to come back to as this person who was at the time pursuing maybe law or pursuing maybe investment banking <clears throat> or pursuing anything that gave them hundreds of thousands of dollars. And then ultimately, after you left college, you decided to start building uh, your company or your brand called WIMS. What job did you actually take if you took one right away? Sure. So uh, when I was in college at the time, again, a frat brother of mine knew that I was interested in finance. He was working at JP Morgan and told me, hey, if I was interested in an internship that he put in the good word. That was basically like a foregone conclusion. Once he sent my resume, I had the job. And so I was interning at JP Morgan, um, I think my junior year of college over the summer, making good money. Uh, and so I was able to build up a resume um, for in financial services so that when I graduated, I could land a full-time job in, in financial services. So that's what I ended up doing for a couple of years outside of, out of college. Lovely. So just to reiterate that for everybody who's listening, this is a testament to, once again, why getting internships are so important. We heard Darian mention earlier that he had an internship. We didn't know what for, but we knew he had one. And now we're finding out that this same internship that he pursued through building authentic relationships is the same internship that ultimately turned into a high paying job. So don't forget things like that. Once again, like get out there, meet people, get acquainted with folks, because you never know who's going to help you achieve that goal, which in Darian's case was that well-paying job. <laughs> and then my question also for that, as we wrap up, Darian, is have you had any other jobs outside of the financial industry while building your companies or ultimately did it end with financial services and then strictly <laughs> on your businesses? Good question. It's been a winding road of sorts. So I had a couple of jobs, uh, outs like once I graduated from college in financial services, I worked at HSBC, JP Morgan, Lehman Brothers, Morgan Stanley, all the banks. Uh, ultimately, I was always in interested in technology. I made the leap to a financial services software company. So the company I was working at used their software. And so it was a good segue for me, again, kind of like talking to the vendor about what they could improve. He knew that I was interested in that sort of thing and I used the product. And so that was my entry into uh, technology. And so I joined a company where I was, I didn't even know what it was at the time, but I was a product associate. Mm. I helped ultimately build this software product that our finance clients were using. And that really opened me up to the technology space. And I was always an entrepreneur. Uh, I think Shark Tank was a popular show at the time. And I just, knowing that I was in this world where people are building technology, I was like, hey, I want to do it myself. So that was around the time where I just, I started to, um, and this is like 2015 to 2018. I was working at that company. I would take what I learned. They were even offering like free classes at like NYU in technology. If it furthered, it was for an investment in you to help them, you know, run their business. And so I, I, I looked at courses that I could take that would help me gain what I wanted to, that they were willing to pay for. So again, I just kind of worked that system, so to speak, um, asking my manager and she was an entrepreneur. She built a software company and then sold it to this larger company that I was working at. So she herself was an entrepreneur and had a multi-million dollar exit. So I would ask her questions. I was able to get a job while I was getting paid well. And I was next to somebody and talking to somebody who I could learn from. And then they were willing to pay for me to learn more. Uh, they would look the other way when I was building my own company. And eventually when I started getting traction, 
uh, I decided to jump ship in 2018 and do my own thing full time. And, but honestly, I had revenue with events on whim, our event ticketing platform. I, we had won some startup cups that helped us some uh, startup competitions that put, brought money in the bank. But ultimately that wasn't all enough for me to pay my bills. So that same uh, knowledge I got from uh, playing poker, I translated that into trading stocks. And so before trading stocks was a, was a thing, I was doing that, making a couple hundred dollars a day. And that helped to fuel uh, this entrepreneurial endeavor that we embarked on and, and uh, I guess did full time in 2017. If you all are not inspired by that, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Darian, thank you so much for breaking that down for us. And I'm so happy that you took the time to help us like understand what that journey looks like. Because I think that a lot of times when we're going into college or just branching into adulthood and trying to brainstorm what our career is supposed to look like, a lot of us kind of plan it out very linearly. Like we think it's only A, B, C, D, E, F, G steps, and I'm going to achieve that. And in reality, Sometimes your trajectory looks a lot like this. <laughs> like you just really never know what the next move that you have to make is to get closer to your dreams. And I think that your journey is a perfect testament to that. So once again, everybody, thank you all so much for tuning in to the first half of the episode. Once again, we were able to dissect Darian's upbringing, his cultural background, getting an understanding of, well, what he thought he wanted to be versus like who he actually became and what he actually pursued. Not only are you all seeing him as the founder and CEO of Squad Trip, but you're also learning that he also started another company prior to this. And not only did he start it, but it was profitable. And I don't know about you all, but if that's not an incentive to listen to the next episode, to hear from someone who built a profitable business, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> all right, everybody. So once again, thank you all so much. And don't forget to move on over to the next episode. We'll see you all soon.